It's now our honor to introduce our friend, Bradley Sherman, who is also part of JFNA's National Young Leadership. Bradley's story is near and dear to our hearts and will bring to life some of what you just saw in that video. Bradley's journey to get where he is today has been nothing short of extraordinary. He is living proof of how the community of Jewish organizations, including so many of those that are here at Tribe Fest, can impact a person's life. We know you'll be touched when you hear about the many challenges that Bradley has overcome, how he was inspired to become a leader in the Jewish community, and how he, in turn, is inspiring others. Please welcome our dear friend, Bradley Sherman. Everybody. I'm Bradley Sherman. Miracle. Has there ever been a more overused yet completely underappreciated word in the English language? Sure, there's the, the garden variety hand of God miracles we all learned in Hebrew school. You know, like the parting of the Red Sea, the walls at Jericho the lamp oil on Hanukkah. But we use the word miracle to describe lots of different things, like miracle drugs, or the 1980 miracle on ice. <laughs> or how about what happened after last night? It's a miracle I made it back to my room. <laughs> you see, there's even Miracle Whip. By the way, that's kosher. Mike and the Mechanics, the Grateful Dead, Matisse Yahu, even this guy sung about miracles. But no matter what the context, the concept is almost always the same, that there exists in this world divine intervention, circumstances of heavenly grace that intercede on our behalf and prove to us that we're meant to be something, something more. I'm not a particularly spiritual person, in fact, my belief is rooted more in Hatikva than the Shema. Now, my rabbi says that a good Jew questions the existence of God. I guess I'm a hell of a good Jew. <laughs> However, I do believe in miracles. That's right, my brothers and sisters. I believe in miracles. Can I have an amen from the congregation? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why do I believe? because I have seen them with my own eyes. I am here today because miracles exist. Now, I know that sounds a bit corny, maybe even crazy, but my journey to this place, to this time, was the result of three miracles. A miracle that brought me into this world, a miracle that connected me with my soulmate, and a miracle that kept me sane when the world was falling apart around. Now, I am seldom at a loss for words. I like to talk. I am a lawyer, an opinionated lawyer. More specifically, I'll talk about anything, politics, movies, whether you should hit on an A7 when the dealer's showing a four. Everybody, you hit. Yet I don't like talking about myself or my past because it changes the way people think about you. It defines you in their mind from that point forward. So when Jason and Rachel asked me to come on stage and speak to all of you, I said, are you crazy? I mean, who am I to talk about myself? But eventually, I came to the realization that having a story that defines you is a good thing. And Owning that truth and sharing it with others makes you stronger. So here I stand today to tell you about the three miracles that shaped my story. Miracle one, I was born on October 23, 1968 as Baby Doe to a 17-year-old kid who was kicked out of her house for being knocked up. Instead of terminating her pregnancy, she did the incredibly brave thing of carrying me to term and putting me up for adoption. 
She brought me to the Cleveland Jewish Orphan Asylum, which is now known as Belfair in the city of Cleveland. Chosen because she met some people who worked there and they had showed compassion to her given her circumstances. Because my biological mother was homeless and I was a small baby, I, it's kind of hard to figure now. <laughs> I was categorized as a risk placement, so I stayed at the orphanage for about six months until a young Jewish couple, Lois and Larry Sherman, adopted me and brought me to a Jewish home. Yeah, I'm smoking a pipe. <laughs> Foreshadow. <laughs> uh, I was provided a fantastic education, a strong moral compass, and the foundation for all the wonderful opportunities that have happened in my life since. Because of this miracle, I walked the world as a confident, privileged Jew. Miracle two. On July 3rd, 1985, I went on a team tour to Israel. My community's federation had a program whereby they would match funds set aside by my parents in order to fund this opportunity. I was 16 years old. On day three, the miracle happened. I met a girl. Now, I, <laughs> please do not laugh at my wife's legs. <laughs> I didn't just meet a girl. I just gave it away. I met the girl. She was beautiful. She was smart but she was from New Jersey. <laughs> now, I love New Jersey now. I mean, I love Bruce Springsteen and shopping malls and diners. I love Snooki. <laughs> but at that time, a kid from Ohio meeting someone from New Jersey was like encountering a fairy, rumored to exist, but I never thought I'd meet one. <laughs> I fell for her immediately, and 26 years later, I fall for her every day. Well, almost every day. <laughs> All because of a miracle. Miracle three. On the afternoon of March 22nd, 1988, I had the world by the balls. Who would have thought that about 10 hours later everything would go sideways? You see, that afternoon I was in Florida, freshman year of spring break with some friends, and planning on going out to dinner with my mother who also happened to be down in Florida taking care of my grandfather. But the day ended in a much different way. It ended with me calling my father and my sister and telling them that my mother had been struck and killed by a drunk driver. I lost it. To this day, I cannot tell you a thing about my, funeral, my mom's funeral. I can't tell you where it was. I can't tell you who was there. I can't tell you what was said. It was a miracle that I survived that day. My father made me go back to Chicago and finish the school year. I didn't want to go, but I went anyways. I was angry and miserable. And occasional partying turned into something much darker. One of my fraternity brothers from ZBT had lost his mother actually a year earlier and said that he said Kaddish every single day as a way of getting back to balance. And with the help of a miracle, I was able to snap out of it. Okay, you may now think I'm being a little bit disingenuous with this divine intervention thing. I'm not really talking about miracles, maybe I'm talking about real things like, it wasn't a miracle, but a Jewish agency that brought me to my family. It wasn't a miracle, but the Cleveland Federation's Gift of Israel program that helped fund my trip to Israel where I met my wife. It wasn't a miracle, but it was the outpouring of love and support of my family and friends and my brothers at ZBT and the members of Hillel of Northwestern that put together a minion every day so that I could say Kaddish. But if you do not think that that's divine intervention, you're wrong. The phenomena which I speak of was absolutely intervention, and to me at least, it was divine. At pivotal moments in my life, 
there was something there for me. Whether it was putting me on the path, lighting that path for me, or putting me back on when I strayed, that something is everything. It's us. It's our community. It's our people. Not just family and friends, or people we know, but people we will never know. Together we are a powerful force, a divine force for achieving good in the world. Together we make miracles happen. When we get involved, when we set our minds and our hands and our hearts in pursuit of causes that save lives, build communities, and promote social justice, we set in motion events that result in the truly miraculous. Now, this, this epiphany was not always clear to me. I did not have an understanding, let alone an appreciation for tzedakah when I was younger. You see, when I was born, I really didn't have an, an, uh, an identity. I didn't have a name. I didn't have a past. However, with each miracle that shaped my life, I began to find one. I was a Jewish son raised by Jewish parents. I met a Jewish girl, and we made a Jewish home. Then in 1999, I was witness to one final miracle, the birth of my two wonderful daughters, Laura Helene, Laura Helene named after my mother, Leahana, and Joanna Meredith. They changed me, and my identity was complete. As I said earlier, I don't like talking about myself because it defines you in the eyes of others. But when I look at them and I think of everything that had to happen in order to get them to this place, to this time, it is as if the answer key is clear to me. I am meant to be part of the miracle. I am meant to do unto others as they have done unto me. So I got involved. I said yes. A friend asked me to co-host a mixer for the Campaign for Jewish Needs, and I agreed. Then another friend asked me to volunteer at a Jewish skilled nursing facility, and I said yes again. And with each and every yes, I felt more connected to my family, my community, my people. And 13 years later, here I stand. One of you, a miracle maker, a true blue spectacle miracle maker, doing what I can, and sometimes even a bit more, to make mir miracles happen for someone I may never know. But I know they're out there, and I know that they are better off because of the work, because of the work that we do. Sure, we all raise money and volunteer to assist those in need, but that's only half the answer. We are not just helping some nameless person in Israel or in other places of the world or even in our home communities. We are helping us. You see, I am living, breathing proof that miracles happen. Thank you very much.